Good morning, everyone, and thank you for having me here today. Okay. So, as a start, I'd like to introduce, introduce my name first. 大家好,我的名字是李道喜. Oh, sorry. はじめまして、私の名前はイートヒです。Hi, my name is Dohee Lee, so this is me, and I'm a type designer at Sandol in South Korea. There's a reason why I said my name in Chinese, Japanese, and Korean. If you look at my name, there's this character in it. It has the same meaning as these two. If you have been to China, Japan, or Korea, or CJK, you may have seen them. Can anyone here tell me what this is? <laughs> okay. Um, so it is called Fu in Chinese, Fuku in Japanese, and Pok in Korean. So Pok can be simply translated as fortune or good luck. But in CJK cultures, it means a lot more than that. If you have been to any Chinatown in your country, you may also have seen this. It works as a symbol, um, specially used for wishing good luck in life. This is a word for happiness, and it also includes the character Pog in it. Pog is one of the most important values deeply connected to happiness. So, long story short, uh, my name means good luck and be happy. <laughs> okay, but working as a Hangul type designer sometimes made me unfortunate. Hangul is like Korean alphabet, and you have to draw 11,172 letters one by one for one single font. This job is exhausting because it takes at least three months. Even worse, it is a series of repetitive works, which is super boring sometimes. <laughs> In the worst way, you can't spare time for trying new things being stuck in an overwhelming workload. So, likewise, uh, Chinese and Japanese include more than 20,000 characters. This huge number poses a great challenge to CK font designers and developers because it makes everything extremely difficult from drawing letters to dealing with font files since the file size is unreasonably large. But I wanted to be happy as a humble designer. I wanted to bring POC to myself. I needed a solution for designing Hangul without suffering. So as a start, I focused on the structure of Hangul. This is a picture of Old Town in Prague. Here, you can find a maze-like network of streets spreading out in every direction because they were built one by one over a long period of time. This beautiful old city reminds me of Hanzi, which also has evolved over a long time to include various patterns and colorful styles. And this is the Isampla district in Barcelona. This area is composed of equally sized square blocks forming a strict grid pattern. It was made possible because this area was built upon urban planning of the city. Hangul looks more like the Shampla. Hangul was also invented quite recently compared to other scripts. So King Sejong, the creator of Hangul, designed it based on advanced knowledge of linguistics. He designed Hangul as composition of individual parts like this. 
And some parts, as you can see here, are repeated in multiple letters. It means that if you create one part, you can easily duplicate it to form the other characters. This repetitive, predictable structure is key to manufacturing Hangul faster and better. In other words, it is a key to my happiness. <laughs> Making use of this regular pattern, designers were able to craft a design system for Hangul. After working on this idea for several years, it came to me that designing Hangul is not different from constructing a large building, a tall one. To be able to cover 11,172 glyphs of Hangul, designers take an architect-like approach. First, you have to draw a long-term blueprint to be able to maintain consistency across all glyphs. You have to assemble each part of Hangul like laying bricks for a house. Most importantly, this whole process can be done without using technology. So I'm going to show you how to build Hangul like an architect. First, I'll be focusing on Glyphs 2 using a smart component feature. Afterward, I'll move on to variable fonts and how to utilize it in the context of Hangul. The smart component in Glyphs is a major breakthrough in designing Hangul fonts. So thank you, Garok and Liner Eric, if you are here. No? OK. It's OK. <laughs> um, anyway, I wanted to, um, you to know that you guys made me really happy because um, I like this a lot. And thank you for the good job here. Uh, so uh, smart components are flexible shapes that you, you can reuse. This is how it basically works in Hangul. So you can duplicate the component and easily adjust the size and position to create another glyph. But the main reason why this feature makes a desirable tool for Hangul is its ability to change a large number of glyphs all at once. As you can see here, there are some square shapes inside the letters. They're basically in the same shape like bricks, but the only difference is their size. In Hangul, those shapes appear <laughs> 588 times, meaning that you must draw hundreds of shapes one by one. But using smart component, you technically need only one shape. Hangul has 19 shapes like this, and each shape appear 588 times. So if you do the math, originally you have to draw 11,172 glyphs all together. But now you only need to make 19 shapes. Quite a big saving, huh? Practically, I make a couple of components for each shape, so it is not actually 19, but theoretically, you can reduce the number from thousands to 19. Once you've made some letters, the next thing you do as a type designer is an endless revision. If you'd like to change the position of those components, for example, you can achieve that by using an extra script or plugin in Glyphs. Without that, even that kind of simple task would have taken a few painful days in Hangul. So likewise, if you uh, like to change the size of multiple components, uh, you can do that also by scripting, like this. You can also change the style very easily. For example, imagine that you want to add a serif to the scale shape component. Then the serif is automatically applied to the multiple glyphs 
that contain the component. Next, reproducing, oh sorry. For example, now we have hundreds of glyphs containing this square shape components. Let's call them as a module. There are 19 similar modules in total. Each module has exactly the same composition as you can see here. The only difference is the first shape. It means that you can switch the first shape with other one to create another module. This is uh, done by using the plugin uh, named replace components. For example, you can replace this gear shape component with a circular shaped one. By doing this, you can make hundreds of clips in a second, in a click. Once you design one module properly, basically you can get what, another one almost for free. You can categorize these modules according to the component size. Uh, uh, these two are about the same size. These two are also. Uh, in this case, oh sorry, uh, you can group them together and you can reuse the same module among the same glyph. Once again, it's a big saving. But um, using smart component isn't easy at first. It takes some time to master how to use it in Hangul. Since you have to think very hard, then follow where your hand is going. But once you carefully set up a design system and process, you can build Hangul faster and better, no matter how tall the building is. As a next step, Let's go further and build Hangul on variable fonts. I'll show you one of my experiments on how to design smart components on the basis of variable fonts. So this is a video of animated Hangul variable fonts tested on the font gauntlet, the website by Dynamo Type Foundry. Okay. Uh, the letter in this video contains this shape. If someone asks, which bothers you most as a Hangul designer? I say this one. This is a consonant called hit. The original hit has a high density of strokes like this with two horizontal bars and a circle downside. In bold, the original hit gets too dark sometimes resulting in poor readability. So designers often make it in different style when it's bold. Let's call it as alternative heat. By doing this, you can prevent it from being too dark when it's bold. But when it comes to interpolation between two extreme masters, especially in variable fonts, it's a problem. These two shapes are not compatible with each other because they look different. So gradual interpolation between two masters doesn't work. Here's how to fix this. If you're using glyphs, you'll probably know about bracket layers. What I wanted to do, uh, do here was basically in the same method, but using smart components. So there are two types of heat you can see here. For thin, I'd like an original heat. And for bold, I'd like um, an alternative heat. But for interpolation to work nicely, I'll use alternative for thin Oh, here, alternative for thin and original for bold to create a virtual master. First, using virtual layers, you create two types of output like this. 
let's say that they, there are weight instances from 100 to 700, for example. From like 100 to 500, uh, we want original heat. And from 600 to 700, which is much bolder, we want alternative heat. Our pickup only the desired instances from here. Then you can get this result under 600, it has original heat. Over 600, it has alternative heat. So um, seen in variable fonts, the interpolation works like this, nice and smooth in every instance, even with the heat shape is changing in the middle. I tried this on another letter in the same logic. Uh, when it gets bold, the design of the component changes accordingly. Now I'd like to conclude my presentation by talking a little bit about the future. One of the two fonts was uh, designed by artificial intelligence, AI, and the other was designed by a human. Uh, which one would be from AI? Okay, <laughs> the one on the right was designed by AI using machine learning technology. At some point, AI did even better good job than human. AI is expected to be a groundbreaking advancement in CJK type industries, since it can solve the biggest problem of all time, the quantity. If you design only a few glyphs, for example, the computer will design thousands of glyphs for you. Hangul is especially expected to benefit much from AI with its simple and predictable structure, which makes it easier to train computers to interpret data and learn. From glyphs to AI, technology will greatly reduce the time, labor, and money spent on producing CJK fonts. So we can say it's efficient but the word efficiency sometimes sounds too cold, especially when it comes to type design. Yes, fonts are products and we make money from it, but at the same time, they are cultural assets closely connected to our lives. So what's important is whether the technology actually brings happiness to people. Technological advancements should be aimed at reducing the unnecessary burden of CJK type designing so that we can make more typefaces with higher qualities. So this is like a Korean New Year's card I made with variable fonts. It's like an old saying, meaning that live long and prosper, Mansu Mugang. And so live long and prosper, all the people who are working with CJK fonts. So that's all, and I've got many things I couldn't show you today, so if you're more interested in Hangul, please contact me here or um, for further discussion. Thank you very much.